Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I wanted to talk about RSA and the Chinese reminder theorem. In particular, an interesting attack when there is a fault, for example, hardware fault on implementations that uh, use uh, RSA uh, together with Chinese reminder theorem. Okay. So I was reading this article, uh, which was published back in um, late 90s. And uh, this particular article uh, talks about Chinese remindering based crypto systems in the presence of faults. So I, um, I'm going to make use of the idea, uh, but I will tune it a little bit to a different context. Okay. Um, the paper's context is mostly about digital signature, um, but I'm going to do a chosen ciphertext um, based attack to demonstrate the problem. Okay. So let's get straight into the problem. All right. So the problem is as follows. Um, if we use Chinese reminder theorem for RSA decryption, uh, what are the uh, steps we, we go through? Uh, we first take the incoming ciphertext C, right? And uh, uh, rise it to the power D, which is the decryption exponent. And we compute C power D mod B. Okay, that's the first thing we do. Okay, let's call this as uh, M1, for example. Okay, what is the next thing we do? We do M2, which is C power D mod Q. Okay, all right. I am going to assume that you are familiar with the RSA and the Chinese reminder theorem because we have been talking about this syntax for quite some time. D is the private exponent, P and the Q are the prime factors, the secret prime factors of a public key N. Okay, N is public key made of two numbers P and Q. So N is P and Q multiplied, distinct prime numbers. And the E and the N are public parameters. D is the private exponent used for decryption. Um, e times D is related to by this interesting relationship, congruent to one mod pi of N. Pi is the Euler's torsion function, or it could be lambda function, the Carmichael function. All right. so or any number that is multiple of um, p minus one um, or, and q minus one, okay? So you have this m1 and m2. Why are we doing like this way, by the way? So first, we, we could just do it without uh, Chinese reminder theorem, right? This is part of Chinese reminder theorem. Without Chinese reminder theorem, how would the decryption work like? You will, you will get the incoming ciphertext C. You will just rise it to power D and mod N you will get back your message that was encrypted. Okay, this is basically the, the version without uh, Chinese reminder theorem. What, what is wrong with it? There's nothing wrong with it except the fact that the, the performance is a problem because we are working with mod n. n is a very, very large number compared to p and q, right? p and q are half of the size of n. Um, if n is a 20, 48 bit number, um, p and q's are 1024 bit numbers. So it is better to work with small numbers. That's the reason why uh, we use Chinese reminder theorem. Okay. Um, and then we can combine these results and, and get back the M. That's the, that's the beauty of Chinese reminder theorem. Okay. Um, we also have D, which is a very large number, usually of the same size as, as N. But here, um, the D can be further reduced because we learned in another theorem that you don't need to compute C power D, you could compute C power D mod P minus one, which is yet another very, very small number. Um, it will be half of the size of N for the exponent. The same with this Q as well, C power D mod Q as well. Okay, so there are performance benefits about the order of uh, three to five times when you use Chinese reminder theorem to do this uh, uh, decryption faster. Okay, so what is the problem uh, now in terms of fault injection? Let us assume somehow something went wrong uh, between these two steps, okay? Somehow you are able to uh, corrupt the memory or whatever, just between these two steps, okay? There are multiple hardware faults that, that, you, that you were able to inject, okay? Maybe you have access to the machine and you were able to uh, inject some, some hardware faults, okay? It doesn't really matter exactly how, but let's assume there is something wrong between these two steps. So M1 was correct, M2 is wrong, okay? So what will Chinese reminder theorem do now? Um, it will help you to go back from your pair M1, M2, right? Into an element in Zn, right? Zn, it will go back. 
Chinese remainder theorem will find an element in mod n. That's the idea of Chinese remainder theorem. So let me quickly summarize it here. What we are doing here is this, in the correct implementation of this, what you're having is this scenario. You will be computing M1 in mod P, right? That's the first uh, component of the pair. And uh, M2 in mod P. Chinese remainder theorem will help you to find the M in uh, mod PQ, okay? We can use the Chinese remainder theorem to find the message in uh, mod Q, mod PQ. Okay, okay, that's basically the beauty of Chinese remainder theorem. You don't know M, but you know when M is divided by P, the remainder is M1. M is divided by Q, the remainder is M2. The Chinese remainder theorem will find the M in mod PQ. But here M2 is wrong because there is a hardware fault injected. So now let us think about how an attacker can make use of this and extract the prime factors P or Q. Okay, this is the context now. Something went wrong in between. And now the attacker wants to extract the prime factors P or Q, okay? Let us consider this uh, chosen ciphertext scenario just to make, uh, make the idea clear and more concrete. <clears throat> I'm going to do this. Suppose you are an attacker and you are able to um, encrypt some message, okay? Which is easy to do because all you need is the public key of the recipient. So you will, you will choose a message M and you will raise it to power E and then you will compute mod M. Okay. So in practice, you will be applying padding before you call this um, encryption function. This is how RSA's encryption function works like. In input is a message. It will rise to the exponent E and computes mod N. That will give you a ciphertext C. Okay. So as I said, I'm skipping the padding skip, uh, step. That's perfectly fine. It's, the attack is still applicable in this case, even if padding is enabled. Okay. So you have M4 E mod N. All right. Um, now let's assume you submit the ciphertext C uh, to the server, okay? Let's say you have a, a server that accepts the ciphertext, okay? Um, chosen ciphertext attacks are like that. You submit something and the server decrypts it for you and gives back the message, okay? So in the, in the correct scenario, the server of course will take your C and applies um, the secret D on it. You don't know the D of course. You don't know the P and the Qs of course. It will give you back an EM, right? That's the correct behavior. But now, because of a bug that was introduced between these two steps, something is wrong. So you're not going to get the M back. You're going to get something else. So there, there is the catch. So how can you now make use of that something else, the erron erroneous, uh, let's, let's call it M cap, the erroneous message and recover P or Q. So here is the trick you can do. Now let's think about this pair M1, M2, okay? Uh, how, how is Chinese remainder theorem converting this M1, M2 back to a message in Zn? Okay, this is mod P, this is mod Q, just to be clear. This is in mod P and this is in mod Q. Okay, so um, we talked about it earlier and I will quickly summarize this. And that's important for us to solve this problem. So if you have M1, M2, we can rewrite this as follows, right? We can write M1, M2 as pair M1, M2 is nothing but M1 times uh, one zero plus M2 times zero one, okay. This is just simple operation. But since M is congruent to M1 mod P, M is congruent to M2 mod Q, I can replace M1 and M2 by uh, M into one zero plus M into zero one, okay. And now because of Chinese remainder theorem, Okay, and then one more step, one more step, and then we are almost there. So what is the value for one zero and zero one in, in which, which element in Zn maps to one zero? Okay, that we have talked about earlier. I'll, I'll write it here again. Uh, if P and Q are relatively prime, which is true in our case, we can always find the two numbers X and Y such that X times P plus Y times Q is equal to one. This is just due to uh, one of the fundamental identities in number theory, Bezout's identity, um, that they'll find uh, using Euclidean algorithm, you can find the X and Y such that X times P plus Y times Q is equal to one, which means I can say uh, the, the pair one comma zero is nothing but uh, YQ. Okay, think about it, Y. Um, if you take YQ and uh, YQ in mod N, okay? What is YQ? YQ is nothing but one minus XP, okay? And if you apply mod P on it, 
what is one minus XP mod P? The XP will become zero, so you get a one. So this is nothing but one mod P, okay? That is the reason I say one zero maps to the point YQ backwards. So this is nothing but M times Y times Q. What about uh, zero one? Of course, zero one maps to X times P. You can check it for yourself, okay? And now, um, well, um, let me now introduce the bug in the in the process, right? Um, M2 was uh, in correctly, incorrectly computed because there was a bug introduced. So you will not have your M2 congruent to M. So this M2 cannot be written as M. So I have uh, some er error message. Let me just keep uh, calling this as M2, okay? And also M2, okay? This is because I, this is a hardware fault. So M is not congruent M2, right? That's the, the point. Um, so you have M2 now. What about, uh, 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 what can you do now? Uh, we can do one more thing. We can rewrite X, Y times Q as M into uh, one minus XP plus M2 into XP. And now all of these things are in mod N by the way, because we already mapped one comma zero to YQ, zero comma one into X, XP all in mod Q. Okay, now you can simplify this and uh, you will see that you'll have M and you can take XP common, right? Okay, then you'll have um, M plus, if I take XP common, what am I having? I will have um, M2, all right, so we have, um, we, we get back, if there's a bug introduced, what are we getting back as M cap? This is the number we're getting back. We get M, plus some extra data in mod n, okay? So now comes the clever solution to, to extract P and Q from this expression. You can subtract U, uh, let me rephrase this. You can subtract M, so you don't need a plus, so you can subtract. So in mod, uh, you do subtraction in mod n. Okay, if it is, if it is negative, you have to add an n to it, but okay, that, that's something you will subtract first. And which is nothing but M2 minus M into X into P mod N, okay, in mod N. And now all we have to do is take this M cap minus M and the solution is this. Now let me write the solution because we are at the key moment. Solution is just GCD of M cap minus M and N. Okay, that's it. That, why would this work? We have a product here. Remember here is a product of three numbers and one of the numbers is a P and the N is also made of P and the Q. Therefore, if I compute GCD of two numbers, the common number either P or Q will come out. So you will get P or Q, okay? That's basically the idea. Um, you will get, uh, one of the prime factors just using GCD of M cap minus M with the N, N is public. So since the attacker was the one who chose the message M, uh, he waits for the reply M cap and he subtracts M from it and computes the GCD, okay? That's all. So uh, let me quickly show you this as well. Um, this is Oracle Java implementation, RSA core uh, Java. Um, you can see here, they do the same thing as I talked about on the whiteboard. First, they compute C power uh, D in mod P, C power D in mod Q, but I'm assuming there's a bug injected between line number 183 and 185. So what they do is if such a bug exists, at the end they check whether um, if whether the, the, the decryption worked correctly. All they do essentially is re-encrypt the message and see whether it matches the incoming ciphertext. If it doesn't, then they throw a, a error message, okay? This is the fix for that particular problem that I talked about, all right? So with this, let's do a quick demo, okay? Of how this idea will work. So uh, my implementation of a Chinese reminder theorem is slightly different from the PKCS standard implementation, but, but they are both mathematically equal and that's not a problem. And it doesn't, uh, um, it doesn't invalidate the, the attack that I was describing, okay? So I'm computing first C power D in mod P, C power D in mod Q, 
and then I am applying Chinese reminder theorem to, to get the results, okay. All right, let's introduce um, some bug in the Chinese reminder theorem calculation and to show to you that the, the attacker will not get the M correctly first, okay. So let's go to the message and let's corrupt this. Uh, let's make this as number one, okay. Or if you don't like number one, make it to number two, doesn't matter. Well, I have to first uncomment this because I'm checking the assertion. Uh, okay. As you can see, the decryption failed. Um, line number 175, the decryption failed, okay, which is expected because we injected a bug. Okay, but what we are getting back is not a M, we get something M with some extra data. Now we can um, apply the attack that I just talked about, okay. All I'm going to do is essentially uh, take the data that I'm getting back, right? Which I will call it M cap for a moment. I'm going to call this um, as M cap. So this is the error, with the error message in it, right? And I'm going to do M cap minus M because I am the one who chose the M. And uh, I will compute the GCD and check whether I get a factor P or Q secrets. Yeah, you see the assertion passed. That means I got the factor. If you want to convince yourself, I will print these values just to, to show to you. Uh, print the secret prime P, which, which I am not supposed to know as an attacker, right? But I was able to derive it from this uh, uh, fault, okay? Secret factor is equal to factor. And let's print P, for example and the Q, the prime factors, just to convince ourselves that this algorithm is actually indeed able to derive the prime factors. Okay, this is going to be large numbers, okay. Uh, let's see whether we can, yeah, you see here, the secret factor is same as P. There's no difference whatsoever, that's good. So we were able to derive uh, the prime factor P from the hardware fault that was injected between these two lines. Uh, when, uh, which two lines? These two lines uh, in Chinese. Okay, let me quickly go there. I introduce a fault here. So the second component uh, of Chinese reminder theorem was incorrectly computed. Therefore, um, this this fault happened. Okay. When there's no fault, of course you can't get it because M cap will be same as M. So GCD of zero comma N will be N. So the factor will fail. No, I can, we can, we can convince ourselves. Now there's no bug. So as you can see, of course, you will not get a factor. Otherwise, this whole thing is broken from the day one. Okay, um, that's basically it. Thank you very much for your attention.